Hello everyone, Linda Israel here. I'm so glad that you could join me. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do and check that, click that not the notification bell at the top so you'll get a notification the next time I do a video. All right, so today I wanna to make a journal card. I am using these doors. I think that, I don't know if she called them vintage doors or old doors by Calico Collage. And I've also got some fussy cut flowers here. And this little door, I decided to make it open. And it also has a hidden compartment behind there. And we made this base to put it all on. So I've got a journal card that I made. Basically what I did was I took some scrapbook paper and put it over an oversized postcard that I got in the mail and sewed around the outside edge. I rounded the corners and added some distress inks. And while it's still flat, I want to add a couple things. I have a new stamp set. It's called barbed wire and there's four different stamps that feature barbed wire. And I'm going to lay this on top of my scrap paper and just stamp it right across with archival ink, jet black. And then I've got a horse head here. That's also a new stamp that I have. And we're going to stamp that down here at the bottom. And then I have a phrase, hold your horses, another stamp. And I'll put that down here. I'm going to set this aside for now because the rest of the decoration is going to go on top. I have this little door and the way Norella made these, she had a frame around the outside edge. And what I want to do is be able to open this door. So I've got a ruler and a craft knife. This is a Exacto brand knife. And what I'm going to do is line it up with the edge of where the door opening will be. Let me zoom in so you can see this. All right, so I've got my metal ruler right on that edge, and I'm just going to cut all the way down. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to keep my knife blade pretty close to where I want to be, and then come across. And I want to stop when I get to here, so I don't want to cut all the way to the edge. And then I need to cut across the top. All right, so I'm just gonna check it. Looks like I got it to cut. All right, good. I'm gonna put the lid back on the knife so that I don't cut myself. Put that away. I've got a stylus tool. And what I wanna do next is line this up on the area where the hinges are. You kind of see those. And score gently. If you press too hard, the paper will rip. I am using cardstock. Okay, so now this should fold relatively easily, like so. So now we have a little hinged door. What I want to do next is put some distress inks around the door, and I'll do the frame. Got to be gentle so you don't rip it. All right, so the way that I made the other one, I made a closure that had a magnet in it. So I've got a little scrap of paper here. Basically it's one inch wide and I'll fold it over just a little bit, maybe a little bit more about there. And then I'll trim it. So now I've got this little piece. I'll go ahead and add some distress ink, especially where it's going to be on the back side, because you can kind of see it. You won't be able to see the top. I'm going to open it up and put a little bit of glue right here. And then here's the original door handle. And I'm going to cover that up. So I'm going to put it just inside and I'm going to adjust it so that it's coming to the edge here. I'm going to open it back up. Now what I'm going to do is closer to this edge, I'm going to take some Fabri-Tac glue and put a dot right here close to the edge. And then I've got some little magnets. These are six millimeter by one millimeter magnets. I could probably get away with a smaller magnet, but I wanted to see how this would work. 
All right, so I'm just pressing that into place. I'll put another drop of Fabri-Tac on the other side, because sometimes metal won't stick with other glues. And so now I'm just gonna put a little tacky glue to help hold that piece of paper shut over the magnet. And just press it into place. Okay, so I got the magnet on this side. Now, while I'm at it, looking at it, I wanna add some fabric. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on top. And I've got a little piece of fabric that I've been using for the others. I'm just gonna lay it on top of that tab and then pop this open and trim off the excess here, okay? So now I've got a little door and there's a magnet sandwiched in here. And I wanna flip this over to the back side, and I can feel where that magnet is right there. So I'm gonna put a little drop of glue here. I'll grab another magnet and then I'll just kinda of let it drop into place and it should line up with the magnet on the other side. And I, I don't think you have to do this, but I decided to do it. I've got a little scrap of paper here. So I'm gonna put another drop of glue. I got the wrong glue first. Put another drop of glue here. And then I'm just gonna line this piece of paper up over the magnet. It'll just kinda of help keep it in place, especially until the glue dries. And I'll trim off the excess paper, looking at it from the front. Okay, so now I have a magnet on the frame and on the door. So now this should pop up and close. So that'll snap together. You see that, how it just kind of comes together? And then I decided that I wanted to have some writing space in here. So I had a piece of scrapbook paper. I've also used some of Norella's graph papers that she had, but this was just on my desk. And just so happens that it's the right width for my little frame of the door. So I'm gonna line it up with the edge here and then trim it, okay? And then I'm gonna take my Aline's Tacky Glue and go across this top portion and then down the side, back up and across that little bitty strip down there and then make sure I'm putting it down where it covers the glue, goes all the way to the top and the bottom, smooth that out. And I'll open it up. So there's my opening. And then I had one of Norella's little fussy cut flowers. She's got a whole new set now. All of that, so I'm just going to fussy cut a little bit of that greenery off and then add some distress inks where I cut it. And I think I wanna put it kind of coming into this corner right here, but I want it to stay where you don't see it when the door is shut. So I'll put a little bit of glue on here and then add that inside. Make sure no glue seeped out the edges. And then this can go back shut. I have some flat back rhinestones. I thought it would be kind of cute to put one here to kind of represent a doorknob, but I don't want to put it on top of the magnet. I'm putting it beside the magnet because this is already kind of thick here. So that's why I put that there. And then I want to decorate here. So I've got, where is it? The horseshoe rubber stamp that I also offer in my shop. And again, some archival ink. I've got a little scrap of paper. This was where I was trimming some things apart. We'll stamp that on top of here. Remember when you're stamping to let your stamp rest on your paper for a moment before you lift it? And that'll help transfer the color. And then I'm gonna take my blending tool and just kind of add a little bit of brown so it's not so stark white in the little dots here. And then let's fussy cut this out. All right, so now I'm gonna take my distressing tool and just kind of color in that edge so it's not white. 
and then I want to glue that up here at the top. Now remember, if you want to have good luck, you want your horseshoe to be up so that the luck stays in the shoe part. If you turn it this way, your luck falls out. I'll add a little bit of glue on here. And then let's position it kind of at the top, but in the center. And then I've got some, I think these are old Prima flowers that I happen to find in my stash. I'll just put a little glue in the center. I'm going to stack another one on top. Kind of press that down in there. And then we'll glue this right in the center of our horseshoe. And then I'm going to grab another flat back rhinestone and put that in the center of the flowers. Press that into place. I've got the field notes rubber stamp. I think it's called specimen field note quartet, something like that. If you type field notes on my website, you'll find it. But also know that in the description box below and on my blog, I'll have a list of all of the products that I use. If you're looking to purchase those, I greatly appreciate your support. So does Norella of Calico Collage. I've got a little strip of paper. Whenever I trim things down, I save the little strips. And that's why I made all these rubber stamps, because I like that they fit on these little strips. All right, my stamped field notes. I'm going to trim this just a little bit better, straighter. And then I'm going to add some Distress inks. And then this guy is going to go right here, uh, probably like in the middle, right below on the X. All right, so the next thing I want to do is want to flip this over. And I know this is the edge I don't want to add. But here I do because I want to make this an additional pocket on the journal card so we can stick another little journaling space in it. So I'm just taking a one inch strip of book page and just sliding it into that glue. I like to have a half an inch on this side and half an inch on that side and I find if I turn it over I can see better. I'll just trim this off and now I'm going to go down this side and this side. Now I'm just trimming off the corners. I'm going to set this aside for a moment for it to dry. Okay, so now I have a piece of car or scrapbook paper, I guess it is. I wanted it to fit in this pocket that I made, which is three inches by a little over, I think four and three quarters inch, but I made mine four and a half. So it was kind of handy because six inches by four and a half. I want to open this to the inside here. And I've got a new stencil. This is called Southwest. And so what I'm going to do is put this on here and I'll just use these arrows in the center here to kind of guide where I want to put them. And I've got a blending tool and some distress inks in walnut stain. I'm going to line that up. And I'm just going to come in here and add this pattern to the inside of my journaling card. So now that has a little bit of a pattern inside. Next, I have a little horse stamp that's running, so I'll ink that up and stamp it here in the corner. I like how that looks. I've got some watercolor pencils here, so I'm going to take a brown and then just quickly watercolor the little horse. And I'll take my water brush. This is a brush pen that has water in it. So I'm just going to come in here and activate that color watercolor pencil. All right, then I've got some black, so I'll do the hooves. Kind of touch those. All right, clean my brush. Put this away. All right, now I'll close this and I want to decorate the front panel. I have a piece of scrapbook paper here and I want it to be just slightly smaller. So I'm just going to line it up with the edge and use this as a guide and trim it off. 
So I've got this little piece. Let's add some Distress Ink to it. And I want to glue this down and put it right here on this edge. Okay, so we got that part. Then I have a book page here and I have another of the larger horses. And I can't remember if the little one's called running horse or if it's called little horse. It may be called little horse and this may be running horse. And so I'm going to ink it up. The smaller your text, the easier it is to see some stamps on top of it sometimes. Sometimes if it's really big text, it helps as well. So I'm just going to stamp that down here in the middle. And then I'm going to use my fingers and fussy cut with my fingers or just ripping it out. Okay, so I've got that ripped out. And we'll use some Distress inks and go around the edge. And I'll just add a little bit kind of on top of that to give it a little more vintage look. I'll come back to this piece and let's glue this down probably right in this area. And then I have from the Thought Dream Cube, I think it's called, and another little scrap of paper. So I'm going to stamp the word dream. And while I'm at it, I have another set that has, I think it's called Horse Mare, what has it got? Horse Mare Stallion Court, Colt in it. It's got four different words. I'm just going to use this as a guide and stamp there. So I've got those two pieces. So now I'm going to cut these apart and add some distress inks to the edges. And I want to glue the word dream up here at the top and the word horse down at the bottom. So now I have a little journal card that I've made to go inside my pocket. So let's put this together, zoom back out. All right, so I want to make sure I've got this at the top. So I'm going to lay that down, grab my door and fold in the edges like so. And I'll apply some glue on the edges. And then I'll place this in the center. So now we have the door on top of the barnwood paper that opens to reveal a little journaling space inside. And then we can take our additional journaling space on this little card and slide that, if I get it lined up right, into our pocket on the journaling card. And then we have additional space on the back side. So here is another one that I made in a different color. And then Norella has other doors and I made one with the wooden door. So I have a variety. I'm working on a horse journal. So I wanted to have some different large journal cards to put in some of the pockets. Well, I hope you like seeing this, that it gives you some inspiration of how to use these doors to make some journaling space. And I love using the magnets. I love the sound of it. And I think it's a lot of fun. I hope you liked it. If you do, again, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Hey, if you have any comments or you want to tell me what you thought of this project, use that comment box down below. And I greatly appreciate you hanging out with me for a few minutes. Know that I go live on Mondays or I have a live premiere that will publish on Monday. Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I hope you'll come back and watch. All right, everybody. Have a fabulous day. Bye.